All right, in this lesson, we're going to be talking about grouped frequency tables, which, as you can see, is the title. All right, I've broken down the, um, the process into seven steps. And the first step is to uh, collect your information. In this case, we're talking about test results. So in step one, I've written down all the test results of uh, the 12 children. Okay, so each child, their mark is written down in step one. In step two, I've taken those marks and I've put them in order from smallest to largest. All right? For now, don't worry about why 10, 11, and 11 are circled. Just make sure that you understand that all of the marks have been written from smallest to largest. So the smallest mark is 10. The highest mark is 19. Okay, now go to step 3, which says subtract. All right, and in this case, we're subtracting the highest mark, which is 19. All right, we're taking 19 and we're subtracting 10. All right, which should leave us with 9. Okay, the next step is step four, which is choose how many groups you want. Well, this is really kind of up to you. Uh, you can choose two groups, you can choose 30 groups, it, it's up to you, but given the fact that we have only 12 marks, all right, it seems fairly logical, fairly sensible that we should have six groups, all right, but we could have five, we could have four, it's it doesn't matter really. Okay, so we've picked six. We go to step five now, and we work out the width of each group. That means we want to know how many marks are going to be in each group of our grouped frequency table. And we do that by taking the result of step three, which was, as you remember, nine, because it was 19, take away 10, leaves us with 9. And we divide that by the answer we had, or the decision we made in step 4, which was to have 6 groups. Alright, so, we worked out 9 divided by 6, leaves us with 1.5. Well, we can't have half of students' marks, so we have to round that. And we know that if we have 5 after the decimal, we need to round it up to two. Okay, so actually we're going to have two marks in each group. Our next step is step six, where we actually organize our results. So in group number one, you'll see that we have two marks. The first mark is 10 and the second mark is 11. So, when we go back up to step two, where we put all our marks in order, you'll see, now this is why I circled it, you can see that we have someone got a 10, but two people got 11. All right, so that means that all together in the first group, we have three students. So that means that three students got the marks 10 or 11. All right. In the second group, we're going to collect up all the students who got 12 or 13. And we can see that there were two students that got 12 or 13. All right. Let's scroll up to step two. And you can see there are our two students. We can see that one student got 12 and one student got 13. All right. And basically, you build all the groups the same way. All right. The first number in your first group has to be the lowest number that we had in step two. Okay, so 10 here is our lowest number. All right, so that needs to be the first number in our first group. All right, now step seven will come next.